Uh, this is the Doosan BXR 60H uh, plate compactor. It's marketed as a reversible plate compactor by Ingersoll Rand. Uh, but if you order it, this is what you're going to get. It's a Japanese-made machine, and it really is a gem. We've had some, a lot of fun messing around with it. The uh, machine itself is about 158 pounds. Its centrifugal force is 5,600. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the vibrating frequency is about 5,600 um, uh, vibrations a minute, and then its centrifugal force is f almost 3,500 pounds, it's 3,417. It'll travel anywhere between 0 and 65 feet per minute, and the pad itself is a 14 by 19 inch plate. Uh, and the Honda uh, on it is a 120, uh, that's GX120, and it's an air-cooled system. Uh, it's a recoil start, and this machine is really a gem uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, here's your handle system so that you can uh, walk behind it when you're pushing it. Notice that it's got a high and low speed on it. You never run the machine on a low speed. You always run this on a high speed, and you adjust the rate of travel by going from neutral to forward and reverse. And remember, with any other plate compacted, the same thing, that the minute that the machine, the machine is compacting when it's vibrating and floating. When it starts jumping, you've done the compaction, and now you're just pounding on compacted earth and you're breaking the machine. So the key to any compactor is that you run the machine and still starts jumping, and then you add more material, or if you're done, that's it. Uh, this particular model, they say that this will do a compaction depth of 13 inches, which is pretty spectacular to me. My experience is that you put a couple inches of gravel down, you compact it, you cut, and then you go back over and add on it. But they're claiming that it'll do up to 13 inches deep. I guess the question is, what is the compaction rate at 13 inches of material, meaning how compacted it gets? Obviously, you're going to get a better compaction if you put on less material, run the machine over it, add a little more, run the machine over it. This is a Honda engine on it, and so it operates just like any other Honda engine. Uh, there are always uh, three things you want to pay attention to. Um, you want to make sure that you have your choke. And when a choke at an angle, that always means that you're turning on the choke. So when you're starting machine, you turn it to on. You make sure that your gas, there's an on arrow here, and there's an arrow here. You turn your gas on all the way. And then the one thing I always forget on Hondas is that you always go get this secondary red backup button. And you got to make sure that's on as well. Once that's in that position, um, any Honda, you just kind of pull till you feel a catch, and then you're not going to yank this like you're trying to run, like you're trying to get it behind the back of your head. You just give it a short jerk and it should start. And there you go. You can hear the engine starting to warm up, and depending on the temperature, you can take that choke off pretty quickly. When you're running a plate compactor, you never run it on low. You always run it on high. So it's really important that when you start it, you leave it alone and let it idle for about five minutes so that then once it's warm, put your machine in neutral and just simply quickly move this up into full throttle and you're in compaction mode. It's got a nice handle and a buffer system so you can let go and walk behind it. And when you reverse the machine, Obviously, you step to the side so that it's not backing up into you. We love this particular little model. It's a gem. It's great for getting in around foundations, sides of houses, anywhere where it's difficult to get a bigger machine in. This does the job. Most important thing is let it warm up for five minutes before you start using it because, again, you cannot run these machines on a partial partially high. You can't slow it down. What you do when you do that is you destroy the clutch. I hope you enjoy it as much One as we last do. thing. When you uh, turn this machine off, you don't immediately just go ahead and reach down and turn off the machine. You actually turn it down to low and let it idle for two or three minutes. What it'll do is it'll cycle and cool down the engine and cool down the transmission fluid in the vibrating machine. And then after it cools down for a couple minutes and then idle, then reach down and turn it off. Thanks a lot, you guys. Take it easy.